Welcome back to another video and good morning to you guys. Good evening, good night, <laughs> whenever you uh, decide to watch this. Um, so I'm going to be taking you through my morning routine. Uh, it's nothing crazy, nothing special. I actually don't have to go into the office today. So um, it's very casual. As you can see, I slept in a little bit, didn't wake up till about nine. Um, and even on days that I do have to go into the office, I don't get up too early, maybe 7, 7.30, um, kind of dependent. So if you were expecting a 5 a.m. <laughs> morning routine, this is not it. Uh, maybe in the future, but right now this is my life. This is what it is. And so um, I'm not going to try to put on a facade as that's my life. <laughs> so um, first things first, though, we got to make some coffee, so. Let's go ahead and do that. Man, that has to be one of the most satisfying, simple pleasures in life. Um, I kind of rotate. You know, sometimes I'll do tea in the mornings, but uh, this season, we're, we're in a coffee season right now. So, um, yeah, it's one of the simple things that I look forward to every day. Uh, kind of just helps set the tone, uh, gives me the opportunity to... Just meditate on the morning um, and get ready to prepare myself for the word. So I usually have a cup of coffee, maybe two, three. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, have a cup of coffee and then uh, open up the word and do a daily devotion. So let's jump into it. And here's the thing. As far as uh, my devotion for today... You know, there are times that I do like a daily devotion, like a plan, so to speak, and um, I'll kind of go day by day until that plan is completed. Uh, one plan that I have open right now that <laughs> I haven't completed is read the Bible in a year, um, which I think is a good plan overall. However, if you do a plan similar to that, like read the Bible in a year or read X amount in you know, X amount of time, it can potentially set you up to just go through it. And instead of, uh, it's like you, you, you try to get through the Bible as quick as possible and you never let the Bible actually get into you, if that makes sense. It's like, yes, you're reading the words, you're reading the logos, right? The written word, but you're not actually receiving the rama. And so sometimes, you know, I'll take a break from those type of plans and then just let the Holy Spirit guide me on essentially what he wants me to study. And um, as of lately, it's really been about simplicity. It's been about just looking at the mundane aspects of life and finding joy and fulfillment in those things. You know, so many times I think just as 
humans in today's society, we have a tendency to just be on go mode all the time, right? Hustle culture is a real thing. And, um, you know, kind of like what I spoke about in my previous video, it's, it's good. It's good because within that, there have been advancements and advancements and things and conveniences that we have been able to enjoy as a society. But is sometimes extremely unnecessary. And most times it really is extremely unnecessary. Like yesterday, I was just meditating on scripture and just having a conversation with God. And he was just showing me uh, how toxic hustle culture really can be, you know, and it's pushing yourself to a uh, place of burnout and oftentimes. And so, you know, you have to realize uh, that we were called to live a life of simplicity. We were called to live a slow and steady life. One thing that he highlighted to me was um, the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? I'm sure everybody's pretty much heard about that, the, tur the turtle and the rabbit. And what happened? Slow and steady ends up winning the race. So you see the turtle took the speed of slow and steady, whereas the rabbit was accelerating extremely fast and then he would rest and then he would go back and he would taunt the turtle, then he would go back forward and he would. And so he, even though he had more energy, that energy was not displaced properly. There were times where he was extremely high and then there was times where he was at a complete rest. And actually there were also times where he took a step back. And the Lord was just using that as an example to highlight how hustle culture can be at times. You know, it's like we get this burst of energy and we go, we go crazy and then we reach a burnout and we have to rest. And then sometimes we go too fast and we make a mistake and we have to go back. Whereas if we can just adopt the mindset of the turtle and just be consistent, slow and steady, but progressive in everything that we do, we'll ultimately get to the destination. One thing I had heard is um, the man that loves the journey will always go further than the man that loves the destination, right? And so when we're setting goals in life, sometimes we can get so fixated on that destination and um, not remember to enjoy the process, like, forgetting to enjoy the process. And that's what the Lord has just been showing me. Like there's fulfillment. I can find fulfillment in the mundane aspects of life because living the dream, right? You know how you ask people, you know, how you doing today? I'm living a dream. Living the dream is literally finding fulfillment in the mundane aspects. It's, it's the journey. Living the dream is finding fulfillment in the journey. And if you learn to find fulfillment in the journey, you're always going to go further than the man who is focused on the destination, right? So just a tidbit there. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into it now, and we're going to see what happens, see what comes up, see what the Holy Spirit tells me. Man, guys, I really, I got to share this with you because, you know, it's, it's one of those days where... The Holy Spirit kind of just leads you, ties things in, revelation clicks, and the presence just gets so thick, man. Like I'm sitting up in here, tears right now because of how good the Lord really is, man. Let me share this with you. And so, by the way, this doesn't have a real cohesive flow. Um, most of the time when I'm doing a study, it's kind of just word vomit, thought vomit. I just, boom, write it down on a page or... In this instance, I'm actually typing today. Um, and that's usually how I begin to start trying to prepare for some of the videos where I do teachings and stuff like that. But sometimes I just kind of keep it to myself, almost like a journal, you know, and, and, and just log it that way. But man, let me tell you, this is what I wrote down. So still tying in the theme of simplicity, right? Um, simplicity, slow and steady, never more. Nevertheless, balance, max out without burnout. And um, more so on that last part, max out without burnout. The question that prompted itself was, 
Am I being faithful with everything that I have, right? All of the possessions that the, the Lord has entrusted me to steward, am I being faithful with everything that I have while maxing out that potential, right? Am I maxing out everything that I have without facing burnout, right? And that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier with the, with the, um, with the rabbit and the turtle. It's like sometimes we have a tendency to think that we need more. I need more. I need more. I need more. And we're not even maxing out what we currently have. And then when we try to take home more, it becomes more responsibility. And we put our place of uh, having anxiety, stress, goes through the roof. Mental clarity is foggy. Mental capacity is used up because now instead of taking time to worship the Lord, to spend with the Lord, to live a slow and simple and steady life, we're taking on more responsibility, right? And it's like the Lord wants us to be slow and steady. He's called us to live a slow, simple life. And with that, he's given us things to steward properly and be faithful with them. So are we maxing out the potential of everything we have before trying to take on more? Or do we just want more and never really maxing other things out? And then are we facing burnout by trying to take on more than what we can handle? You see, that's the thing. Like the Lord is never going to give us more than we can handle. It's a progression. You know, he does test us. He does allow us to be tempted, but that's for the purpose of growing our character so we can handle more, so we can do more for the kingdom, right? And so I want to read this to you here. Genesis chapter 33, verses 13 through 14. But Jacob said to him, my Lord, my children are weak and the flocks and the herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flock will die. Verse 14, please let my Lord go on ahead before his servant. I will lead on slowly at a pace which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my Lord in Seir. That's the thing, guys. That verse right there just highlights, those two verses highlight that slow and steady. Because what Jacob is saying is, I have a flock. I have children. And if I push them too hard, my flock will die. If I, if I try to make them do too much too quick, they will reach burnout and they will die. So, Lord, you go on ahead of me. You light up the path. You set the path for me, before me. And I'll follow after you. And I'm going to go at a nice, steady pace where everyone is able to keep up rather than trying to uh, push them too hard, too quick. It's finding that pace that is comfortable so that we can just settle in and go slow and steady because the Lord is not going to push us further than we are able to go. Right. He's not going to put on more on our plate than we can handle, so to speak. And it made me think about how so many times in life, you know, we we work, 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 work so we can take vacation. We go we go overtime, overtime, overtime so we can take paid time off, you know, and it's just this like extreme and then a dip, a, an extreme and then a dip, you know, rather than just having a plumb line. Right. And what I noticed is most of the time. You know, even in even in my age group, I'm a millennial and even Gen Z, I have friends who work Monday through Friday. And then when the weekend comes, they're in the club trying to turn up. I, w I wouldn't even say they're my friends like that because I don't really hang out with people like that anymore. I cut them off. But still, you know, I had seen that in my early 20s where people and I used to do the same thing, you know, to a certain extent. But people would work Monday through Friday. And then when the weekend comes, they're trying to escape that work reality. Right. So they can go party on the weekend. So this is what I wrote here. I was like, the drive to work is influenced by a desire to escape. Isn't that crazy? It's like, I'm working really hard just so I can escape the work. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense almost. You know what I mean? And um, escape the reality that is set before them and the reality that they most likely created themselves. You see, that's the thing. Majority of those type of people don't know how to tap into the peace of the Lord. They don't know how to tap into the presence of God, which allows them to just go at a consistent pace, nice and steady, filled by peace of the Lord. Right. It's, it's just this emotional roller coaster that they're going through. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. 
the weekend comes, now I'm, I'm turned up, I'm lit, I'm happy. And then once Sunday evening rolls around and that reality sets in, I got to go back to work, I feel like trash again. You know, and it, it's a sad thing because those people are essentially not experiencing the peace of the Lord in most cases, in most cases. And even Christians themselves sometimes find ourselves in that situation. I find myself in that situation. So I'm, I'm preaching to myself when I, when I write these things down because there are things that I have dealt with and there are things that I'm still dealing with, you know, but praise the Lord because he's bringing us to new levels every, every, every day. We're going from glory to glory, right? And um, so one thing about that that I want to tie in here is also with Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm going to read uh, verses 13 through 20, and it's still kind of harping on that theme of going at a steady, uh, at a steady pace and allowing the Lord to go before us to be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. So in those times of going slow and steady, we have hope. We can cling to hope in the Lord. And so that's going to be highlighted right here in Hebrews. So let's read it this. And I'm going to read from the MSG translation because this is so powerful, guys. This is so powerful. Check this out. God gave his word. Okay, verse 13. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it all the way, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I will bless you with everything that I have. Bless and bless and bless. Abraham stuck it out and got everything that had been promised to him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by the appeal to some authority above them so that if there is any question that they will make good on their promise, the authority will back them up. Pause. Let's just hold on real, real quick because we've all done this. I know I have. Um, it's like, yeah, I promise I'll meet you there at five. And the other person will be like, no, you won't. You're lying. And it's like, no, I will. I promise. I swear to God. <laughs> all right. I used to say that all the time. I swear to God. Why? Because you're placing that promise on an, on an authority that's higher than you so that authority can back you up and help you make good on that promise. Right. And now when we use it like that, obviously, that's that's a little dumbed down version, like that's a lesser version of it. But it's still that's the reality of that we're saying. Right. That's where it comes from. Um, and that's what clicked here. I was like, wow, that's crazy, because I used to say that all the time. All right, let's continue. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word a rock solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. It's just the way that's worded, guys. It's just like firmly fixed, strong foundation. The word of God is solid. He will never break his promises. Everything that he speaks will never return back void to him. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's like a level of integrity that I can't even fathom at times, you know? And I strive to be like that. And we all should. But it's like God's promises never return back to him void. Let's continue. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God where Jesus running ahead of us has taken his permanent post as high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. Man, like, oh, it's just so weighty, man. I'm telling you, bro. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I just feel the presence on that one because it's like this, guys. What, he's, what, the, what scripture is saying here is we can reach with both hands to the promise of God with hope. We can reach with both hands and grab onto that promise with hope because his promises are never returned back void to him, right? And we can reach to those promises, grab them with both hands and never let them go. Why? Because his promises never return void. His promises are forever faithful. And by doing so and reaching to those, to those promises, it's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, unbreakable spiritual lifeline, reaching past all appearances, right? Meaning like I'm reaching to that promise past all the experiences around me, past everything that tells me that's not possible. And I'm reaching past those things. 
I'm, I'm reaching past the doubt. I'm reaching past the fear. I'm reaching past the anxiety. I'm reaching past every situation that is trying to exalt itself and say that it's not possible. I'm reaching past all of that and grabbing onto that promise with both hands tightly and never letting go. And by doing that, it's an un, it's a unbreakable spiritual lifeline. And we're reaching right to the very presence of God where Jesus running ahead of us has taken his permanent post as the high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. We can reach to it like Jesus walked out that in perfection, walked out that hope in perfection, endured the cross by the joy of the hope set before him. Come on, man. Like, oh, it's just so good, man. It's just so good. It's just, guys, this word, man, this is why you have to read the word daily because it just renews your mind. We're called to walk by faith and not by sight because these, uh, the things that we see in the world are constantly going against the word of God. And if we allow these things to have more of an influence on us than the word of God, we'll fall victim to them. We'll set strongholds and we'll limit God's ability to work in our life. You got to realize that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, right, through the death, burial, and resurrection, and is now seated at the right hand of God on the throne, he paid it all for us, and he essentially gave us a treasure chest. He gave us a treasure chest. And the key to unlocking that treasure chest to receive everything that he paid the full price for is the renewing of our mind. That key to unlock that treasure chest, the key to financial breakthrough, the key to healing within the body, the key to demolishing strongholds, the key to walking and living a life of abundance, free from depression, free from anxiety, free from stress, free from anything that, that this world tries to project onto us. And what did he say? What did, uh, when, he, when he asked Peter who he was, Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you know, pretty much congratulations, because this was not revealed to you by man, but by the father who is in heaven. And on that, on this rock, I will build my church. It wasn't, it wasn't Peter being the actual rock or person that he was going to build a church on. It was the mindset that Christ is the son of God. So he built the church on the mindset that Christ is the son of God. And then what did the scripture say? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Meaning this guys, that the gates of hell are the strongholds in our minds that keep us from experiencing the full freedom in which Christ paid for, right? I used to have a fence when I lived in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I had a fence in the backyard and I used to have a dog. And what happens when you let the dog go out into the backyard? He can't go out, right? And, and experience full freedom because the fence is the barrier that's blocking him from going out and running the neighborhood and, you know, whatever. But it keeps you enclosed. It keeps you trapped. So Christ was saying, Jesus was saying, this is the rock. This is, that knowledge that you just said of, of Christ being the son of God, that's the, that's the rock in which I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Meaning that there's complete freedom. There's complete freedom when we accept that as a mindset. And the gates that try to keep us enclosed and trapped will not prevail against us if we continue to renew our mind and tap more and more and more and more into that freedom that ultimately Jesus paid the highest price for. Come on, man. And so, I don't know, guys. Like, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm just, it's just been thick, man. Like, this, this study today has just been thick, tying it all back in. You know, we're called to live a slow and simple life. Understand that the Lord goes before us, defeats the enemy, he has already gone ahead to win the battle. He's already gone ahead of us to win the battle. And knowing that he has already defeated the obstacles that are now going to come up in front of us, and he's already defeated them, it allows us to maintain peace. It allows us to maintain trust. It allows us to maintain hope. It allows us to go at a pace that's slow and steady, simple slow life. That's what we're called to live. Not how can I get to the next emotional high? How can I get to the next job promotion so I can go take this vacation, so I can go spend money and worldly pleasures? 
to satisfy myself, to try to fill the void that ultimately Jesus Christ can fill. Live a slow and steady life. Live a humble life. That's what we're called to do, guys. So I'm probably going to spend a little bit more time here just kind of sitting in the presence because, like I said, it's just been thick, man. Um, And then we're probably going to get ready to go to the gym. So all right, guys, I'll check in with y'all in a little bit. So today we have chest, back, and a little bit of arms. Probably not gonna be too long, man. Uh, keep it nice and chill, easy, straight to the point. Um, I'm finding myself these days not really wanting to spend too much time in the gym. There were times in the past where I would go to the gym and I'll probably do a session and it might take two hours sometimes even three <laughs> and I'm like nah <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't with that these days so usually about 30 45 minutes maybe an hour if I'm doing some cardio or something like that but um yeah just in and out man it doesn't have to be too crazy it really just comes back to the consistency as long as you're showing up and just doing something over time that consistency is going to add up and progress is gonna be made. So just show up. It doesn't have to be the most intense workout. It doesn't have to be the craziest workout. Just continue to show up. That's it. So I'm gonna warm up and we're gonna jump into it. Boom. So we are back in La Casa and uh, the gym sesh was nice and chill, man. Very simple, straight to the point. I was done in about 30 minutes. Um, nothing too crazy. And uh, typically I do like to go on walks afterwards, but it's too hot. <laughs> like it's too hot in Orlando right now. So uh, we're going to skip the walk for right now and uh, we're just going to make the shake. And then we'll probably, maybe later I'll go on a walk, but right now <laughs> we we not doing that. So Let's make this shake. Yo. <laughs> so I realized that I barely have any almond milk left. So we're still going to use the last little bit, but I'm not going to the store and then coming back. So we're just going to make this and then add a little bit of water <laughs> into it. And it's going to be good. And that's how you just got to do it sometimes. That's good, man. That's real good. <laughs> um, yeah, hey guys, I really like to do smoothies. Um, they're very convenient. So I usually fast, um, and technically this is my first meal of the day. Um, and sometimes it'll fluctuate. I'll do smoothies sometimes, and then sometimes I'll just go straight to making breakfast. But today I was feeling a smoothie, um, a very easy way to just get my greens in, a little bit of protein, because uh, I really just don't feel like cooking right now, and I'm not hungry, hungry, so to speak. So I'm going to just have a smoothie. And in the meantime, um, that's pretty much going to wrap up 
The morning routine, as you see, is not very crazy, not very extravagant. So now what I'll probably do is just check some emails, uh, do a little bit of work, and I'll probably just put on some YouTube and consume some of my favorite content, you know, and that, that kind of just set the tone for the day. And uh, that's really all there is to it, simple morning routine. So I want you to look down at verse 1 in Psalm 32.